Hi again, everybody. Um, uh, so we are very fortunate to be able to have a short Q&A with our guests this afternoon. Um, so before we bring them out, here's how it's going to go. If you can please raise your hand high and speak as loudly and clear, clearly as you can. And uh, keep your questions brief, and we'll try to repeat them for the benefit of the rest of the audience. Okay, without further ado, please join me in welcoming Sarah Pauly. Today, so I'll introduce you to Lou Kirby, who played Daniel. Sarah Silverman, who played Jeremy. for the film was uh, to have a visceral experience, hopefully as an audience, of that feeling of desire when you fall in love or fall in love for the first time and the world comes alive and it's almost an assault of colour. Um, and I also wanted to show Toronto and the way I experience it, which is a colourful, interesting place to look at. It. talking about the production design and the color in the film, the real credit would go to Matthew Davies, the production designer, who I think is the most talented production designer ever. And uh, and I've always wanted to work with him, and, and between him and Luc Montpellier, who worked with the three of us, and, and with Leah Carlson, the costume designer, exhaustively on creating the color palette and working together as a team to try to bring a slightly hyper-real look to the film. So it's, uh, it's really their work that you see, not mine. Um, just down in front here in the way. Yeah, the house. Um, so the house that uh, Lou and uh, Margot live in, um, we we leafleted all over the annex, a little Portugal, a little Italy, thousands of places, and uh, and had lots of really great responses from some people who are like quite prominent, far too busy to have people shoot in their movies, like in, sh sh shoot in their house, like Jack Layton and Olivia Chow, who offered up their house, um, which is really sweet. And uh, and we we ended up finding the house. Um, in Little Portugal, it was a blank slate. It was a house that was under renovation. It was just a white house that had like some nice sort of original moldings and some stained glass. And Matthew Davies completely created all the layers of the house to make it look like it had lived in by maybe a Portuguese family and then, you know, bought, you know, sort of cheaply by them when, you know, the market was low and then, you know, with haphazard things bought secondhand. And, and there's layers of wallpaper everywhere, but that's all created the whole history of that house, which I think is one of my favorite things about the film is Matthew's work in it. So, thanks for asking me two questions about the production design. <laughs> um, I'm just going to go into the center here. Yeah, go ahead. That's yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, at the moment, I'm sorry. <laughs> the, the woman with the sunglasses on your head. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Maybe I'll pass that over to Seth. Do you want to answer that? Sure. Just to uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, I can always speak uh, for the scenes I'm in, I guess, but uh, actually, I'll speak for everyone's scenes. Uh, it was, uh, <laughs> I think uh, it was a mix, honestly. I think some of the some of the scenes uh, were literally word for word um, exactly how they were written in the script, and then uh, there were times where Sarah would just 
kind of point a camera at us and say, set up for a party. And we'd set up for the party for 20 minutes <laughs> as they uh, rolled on it. Or um, like a scene where I'm on the phone and she's dancing around uh, trying to distract me. Uh, that kind of stuff uh, wasn't really scripted. <laughs> Shockingly. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, it was just two pages of them. Yeah, uh-huh, yeah, okay, yeah. Uh, but, uh, yeah, but then some of the scenes uh, were written word for word. And I think, you know, I'm always impressed with movies when you can't tell what's what, when you can't tell when the improv scenes seem written and the written scenes seem improvised, uh, which is how this is. And I think, uh, I always think that's really cool. Um, yes, down in front, go ahead. So just sorry to repeat, the um, question was for Seth and Sarah and how working on a film like this, how that was for them coming from so much comedy, what was the transition like? For me it felt pretty seamless, I mean, it's, um, you know, I, I don't know if this is, maybe this is a movie that is a drama, but it's a drama about um, people with, who are funny, you know, and have <laughs> senses of humor, and um, also, I'm capable of just saying words, like, like it's real, like it's real. <laughs> Um, yeah, 
Handshakes a couple times. Because sometimes, oh shit, I'm sorry. I couldn't find a taxi anywhere. It was so hot. I was dying. So I just hung out at a light and like looked to see if people, like a safe looking person, and uh, crawled in the back of a packed up trunk of stuff. A guy was moving and going to a, a wedding somewhere, but he dropped me off at my hotel. So thank you. I think his name was Jason. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> Do you want to speak about Toronto? Do you want to speak about Toronto? He's been hoarding a mic this whole time. I spent a lot of time in Toronto. I grew up in Guelph, so I I took the bus every weekend. Through high school, I took the bus every weekend, and um, I went to raves. That was I didn't go to raves during the shoot of this. Uh, it just heightened my love for the place. I don't live here, but I keep trying to convince my girlfriend that we should consider being here more often. I also love how mixed it is. It's so culturally mixed here. I mean, I yeah. I love that. It's, it's they have little versions of countries I've literally never heard of. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, um, sorry that we only have time for one more. I know everybody would love to hear more from the cast and from Sarah. Um, but you've had your hand up in the corner on the side for a really long time, so I'm going to go to you. Sarah, I think Dan's out of here about how human beings are very really should be monogamous and polygamous. And I was wondering if you had any thoughts on, on that here, where kind of you feel like you're facing your life, maybe it's not so sweet and different. Um, so the question is about polygamy versus monogamy, and. Uh, <laughs> I think there's different periods of your life where you can, I guess, be polygamous and then go back to being monogamous. I think it's the, and uh, he referenced a book by Dan Savage. It would be weird if I had an opinion on that for everybody. Um, I, I, I think it's entirely individual. I, mean, I, I don't think I can give a much more in-depth uh, um, answer than that. I, 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 I think that, uh, that there are people who are really need and want to be monogamous and people who really don't want to be and can't be. And, yeah, I think it's entirely individual. What do you want to say? I would say it has a lot to do with your formative years. <laughs> I spat on Sarah earlier and I just did it again. Sorry. Um, it's okay. I love it, kind of. Shower um, you. I feel like I deserve it from something in my formative years, which pulls it fully. That was good. I like that. That was nice. You know, we don't get what we want, we get what we think we deserve. And I think I'm going to leave you on that. <laughs>